Happy Friday, it's that time. Time for another Five Things Friday. If you have read any of my books, you are probably familiar with the fact that there is one common theme that runs throughout every series I write. Any guesses what that might be? I'll tell you right now, it's coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. This week's Five Things Friday is owed to my five favorite, at least at the moment, coffees. Okay, because I've not had enough coffee today, that's never true actually, <laughs> we're gonna get right to it. I picked five of my favorite coffee recipes from recent books or even just some books that were inspired initially by coffee, you'll see. Number one comes to us from Till Death Do Us Tart. It's summertime in this book, it's a wedding, and in my mind there is nothing better than an ice cold cup of cold brew. It's a beautiful winter day here in Ashland, but it's sunny outside. And to me, that means an afternoon cup of cold brew is perfection. So cold brew is so easy to make. You need um, a bag of your favorite beans. For this particular cold brew, I wanted a really dark, rich roast. So I'm using Good Bean Coffee out of Jacksonville, a local roaster. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start by layering in water in your cold brew maker and then you scoop in grounds. You wanna layer them ev evenly and kind of tamp them down to make sure that they're nice and smooth before you continue to pour water on each layer. Now cold brew needs to brew and do its magic overnight. So this batch I started last night and it has been brewing away in the fridge and is now ready for my favorite part. Okay, look at these luscious grounds. They have soaked overnight into the richness that is cold brew. We're gonna take it step by step from this point. So what I'll do is I will get my pitcher and I will slowly allow the cold brew to work its magic and turn into delicious coffee with a simple pull of a plug. So I'm gonna take it like this. I line it up nice and easy and then <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> there it goes. Look at that beautiful drip, drip, drip. I'm gonna take the top and press the grounds down to make sure I get all of that coffee into my pitcher. Once you've transferred the cold brew into a pitcher, it will stay in the refrigerator for up to two weeks. If you haven't tried cold brew, here's a fair warning for you. It's really strong and rich. I like it that way, so I drink it just as it is over ice with a little bit of cream, but you can always balance that out with um, some water or maybe half milk. So if you're new to cold brew and you want to tiptoe in, you don't have to go for the pure brew to start. One tip I learned early on is to take coffee that you have left over from your morning pot of coffee and freeze it into ice cubes. This is the best in cold brew. You're, in, you're gonna be in coffee overload zone. So I froze these ice cubes overnight and now they're ready to come out of their nice silicon mold. So I'm just gonna carefully pop each ooh, beautiful coffee ice cube out. I love these molds, they're so simple and you don't have to spend hours trying to bang an old plastic tray of ice that I remember from my childhood. And just like that, I have ice cubes to go into my cold brew. All right, so Andy in the Bake Shop Mysteries Until Death Do Us Tart is gonna take maybe three four if you're feeling festive. You're gonna pour in your cold brew, nice and easy. Just like that. And then finish it with some coconut cream. Just stir it. Let the ice really soak in it for a minute and then Cheers, cold brew. Mm. 
with a touch of coconut. This outside on a sunny afternoon and a book, you're set. You're set for the entire weekend. Coffee number two comes to us from Violet Tendencies. This is the second book in my Rose City Mysteries. And of course, because it's set in Portland, Aline and Britta, my two main characters, drink copious amounts of coffee because that's what you do when you live in Portland or really anywhere in the Northwest, let's be honest. In this book, I share a recipe for Swedish spiced coffee. It's really easy to make at home. You're gonna start with some simple beans. For this recipe, I chose roasted beans that have been roasted in cinnamon and nut spices. Look at the beautiful oils on that roast. Starting with a flavored roast, the cinnamon nut spice that I'm using is already going to give the coffee that elevated, beautiful, spicy flavor. I'm going to take it up a notch by adding whole cloves and an assortment of peppercorns. I'm going to add these straight to my coffee grinder with the beans. Then it's easy, you let your grinder do all the work. Pop on the lid and let the coffee and these beautiful spices blend together. Your finished product is gonna smell so amazing. I'm smelling the cinnamon and the spice and that hit of pepper. And then you get these big sort of chunks and you're gonna use this just in your everyday brew. So after brewing a pot of this aromatic cinnamon, spicy, peppery deliciousness, it goes straight in my cup. This spiced Swedish coffee, I like to drink straight black because it's so full of spice that you get so much on your palate that I don't think it needs anything else to balance it out. But if you love cream, add a touch of cream, a splash of milk, whatever your passion or poison, as Britta would say, and go, for go from there. Coffee number three comes to us from Live and Let Pie, the newest book in the bake shop, Mysteries. This coffee is almost like dessert. I mean, you can claim it as a coffee, but it's also a perfect dessert if you're looking for something unique and very Italian. It's a recipe for an affogato that Andy makes for the team in Live and Let Pie. And it's really easy and such an elegant dessert. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start by picking your favorite espresso blend of coffee and pulling one shot. If you wanna go crazy, pull two shots of straight espresso. All right, so we're gonna get a nice scoop of espresso in here and make sure that you tamp it down. That's the key. Ooh, it smells so good. What is the key to any affogato? None other than ice cream. I have two soft scoops of vanilla bean ice cream here, and you're simply going to pour your espresso shot over the ice cream and allow it to melt. Don't worry if it spills, we can fix that. And for a finishing touch, I have some dark orange chocolate. I like the orange flavor with the coffee that I'm gonna break off and just grate a little bit into the top. And then you are going to have a creamy coffee sweet dessert, or really you can cheat and just call this breakfast. Andy would say it was breakfast. Affogato. Andy's affogato. You can drink it. You could start with a spoon and then just go straight to sloshing it down. Mm. Yum. If you have ice cream and coffee fans in your life, make them one of these. Coffee number four. Coffee number four comes to us from my very first mystery scene of the climb. 
Now, unlike the earlier coffees that have been included on my ode to coffee list this week, this recipe is not in a scene of the climb. But the reason that I wanted to include it is because really coffee starts the entire mystery off in scene of the climb. Meg, my protagonist, has a chance encounter with her future editor at a coffee shop in Portland, Oregon, where she orders a full fat mocha. So she drinks a lot of coffee and a lot of mochas while she's couch surfing and off on these crazy Pacific Northwest adventures. I had to create Meg's mocha for you. So here's how it goes. You're gonna start with just a basic cup and I already made some homemade milk chocolate sauce. So you pour your homemade chocolate sauce, look at how delicious that is, it's so rich and creamy, into your cup or mug, whatever kind of vessel you wanna use for your mocha. I like to use these glasses sometimes just so you can see all the layers come together. Once you have that, you're going to pull two, not one, don't be stingy, two shots of dark roast espresso. Once you have your espresso shots ready, you're going to froth and steam your milk. Now, because Meg is 20 and not worried about calories ever, she orders a full fat mocha. That means made with whole milk. So for this recipe, I did a combination of heavy cream and non-fat milk, which is what I actually drink. Um, so maybe you're ending up with more like a 2% in this, but if you wanna go crazy, you could use whole milk or heavy cream, it's up to you. You're going to pour your milk or heavy cream into your pitcher. Okay, once your milk is hot and frothy, I once um, had someone tell me that your milk should always be 180 degrees, and there's actually a whole scene in Meet Your Baker about someone who complains that their milk isn't the right temp. You're gonna go ahead and pour in your two shots of espresso, and then you're gonna add your milk. Bubbling hot milk, making sure that you reserve some foam to layer in on the top. And if you wanna get really fancy, you could tuck in a square of chocolate and let that melt. I mean, <laughs> That's a little comfort in a cup for sure. It's a delicious milk chocolate mocha ode to my little Meg. It's really good. Maybe you shouldn't go for full fat. I can't believe that we're already at coffee number five. Time is flying by and I have so many more coffees I could share. This is definitely gonna have to be another Five Things Friday. But to round out this week's coffee, I am choosing Andy's Snowflake Latte from On Thin Icing. I have probably received more reader response on Andy's Snowflake Latte than any other coffee drink I've ever included in a book. And luckily you've loved them. One thing that I did this week is swap out the regular milk, all of the dairy in this particular recipe with almond milk. I've gotten a lot of reader requests for non-dairy coffees and this is a great way. And you can do this with any coffee drink you like. So we're gonna start with some white chocolate chips and I'm just gonna add in a little almond milk. This is vanilla almond milk um, because it just has like a nice little vanilla flavor and a touch of sweetness to it. White chocolate can be cloyingly sweet. So for this, you wanna go easy on the white chocolate. Unless you love cloyingly sweet, then knock yourself out. Okay, so just add a splash of the almond milk and then we're gonna stick this in the microwave for 30 seconds, maybe a minute. We're gonna check on it halfway through. Now that the white chocolate is melted, I'm gonna pour that into my glass for the first layer of our almond milk snowflake latte. If you happen to have a white chocolate syrup at home, you can definitely use that too. I just think it's fun to make homemade. Okay, then I'm gonna pull two shots of dark roast espresso. I love that sound. Next, I'm gonna froth one cup of almond milk, just like you would froth a regular milk, bring it up to temp and create a nice foam for the top. Although actually we have a secret ingredient we're gonna add to the top. Now we're gonna froth the milk until all those nice bubbles begin to form. 
we get a foam and then the almond milk gets nice and hot. Now that we have our lovely shots of espresso pulled and our almond milk steamy and frothy, we can go ahead and assemble Andy's snowflake latte. So we, remember we have our white chocolate syrup in here. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of almond extract and just kinda stir that in a little bit. Then I'm gonna add my first shot. Oh, it smells so good in here. If you are a fan of almond, this is definitely the drink for you. And my second shot goes in. You really wanna mix in that white chocolate so it gets layered in through the drink. Then we're gonna take our steamed almond milk, reserving the foam, carefully pour in the milk. Let it turn that nice golden color. We're gonna add a little foam and then I have a secret surprise. You can go ahead and go all in for the foam if you're a fan of foam for the snowflake latte or my secret surprise is this. I found almond milk whipped cream. I've never been super successful with whipping almond milk into a nice like fluffy cream, but I found this at the grocery store and I'm so excited because my kiddo cannot drink milk. So this has been his substitute for hot chocolates and anything sweet. So to finish off Andy's snowflake latte, you can take your almond whipped cream and add a beautiful layer on the top. That is so gorgeous. Look at those layers, that nice cream on the top. I can't wait to taste it. Mm. Okay, I see why I received so much reader email about this drink. It is divine. It's the perfect snow day latte. So there you have it. Five coffee drinks inspired from multiple mysteries. What are your favorites? Have you tried any of these? Are you a fan of Andy's snowflake latte updated with almond milk? Have you ever made an affogato or do you love an ice cold glass of cold brew? I want to know. And as always, thanks for joining me for another Five Things Friday and cheers to coffee. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Wishing you happy, happy coffee drinking.